Kumusta? Ngayon ay may bago na naman tayong pag-aaralan at may bago na naman kayong matututunan dito sa Sir D Vlogs and Tutorials. The ecosystem is the structural and functional unit of ecology where the living organisms interact with each other and the surrounding environment. In other words, an ecosystem is a chain of interaction between organisms and their environment. The term ecosystem was first coined by A.G. Tansley, an English botanist in 1935. An ecosystem can be as small as an oasis in a desert or as big as an ocean spanning thousands of miles. There are two types of ecosystem, the terrestrial ecosystem and aquatic ecosystem. Terrestrial ecosystems are exclusively land-based ecosystems. There are different types of terrestrial ecosystems distributed around various geological zones. They are as follows. The grassland ecosystem. In a grassland ecosystem, the vegetation is dominated by grasses and herbs. Temperate grasslands, savanna grasslands are some of the examples of grassland ecosystem. The desert ecosystem. Deserts are found throughout the world. These are regions with very little rainfall. The days are hot and the nights are cold. The forest ecosystem. A forest ecosystem consists of several plants, animals, and microorganisms that live in a coordination with the abiotic factors of the environment. Forests help in maintaining the temperature of the earth and are the major carbon sink. The tundra ecosystem. The tundra ecosystems are devoid of trees and are found in cold climates where rainfall is scarce. These are covered with snow for most of the year. The ecosystem in the Arctic or mountain tops is tundra type. The aquatic ecosystems are ecosystems present in a body of water. These can be further divided into two types, the freshwater ecosystem and the marine ecosystem. The freshwater ecosystem is an aquatic ecosystem that includes Freshwater ecosystems have no salt content in contrast with the marine ecosystem. The marine ecosystem. This ecosystem have a more substantial salt content and greater biodiversity in comparison to the freshwater ecosystem. This includes The structure of an ecosystem is characterized by the organization of both biotic and abiotic components. 
Biotic components refer to all life in an ecosystem. Based on nutrition, biotic components can be categorized into autotrophs or the producers, heterotrophs or the consumers, and saprotrophs or the decomposers. Producers include all autotrophs such as plants. They are called autotrophs as they can produce food through the process of photosynthesis. Consequently, all other organisms higher up on the food chain rely on producers for food. Consumers or heterotrophs are organisms that depend on other organisms for food. Consumers are further classified into primary consumers, secondary consumer, and tertiary consumer. Primary consumers are always herbivores that they rely on producers for food. Secondary consumers depend on primary consumers for energy. They can be either a carnivore or an omnivore. The tertiary consumers are organisms that depend on secondary consumers for food. Tertiary consumers can also be an omnivore. And decomposers include saprophytes such as food and bacteria. Also, the detritivores such as millipedes, earthworms, and beetles. Scavengers such as hyena, vulture, raccoon, and other organisms that they thrive on dead and decaying organic matter. Decomposers are essential for the ecosystem as they help in recycling nutrients to be reused by plants. Abiotic components are the non-living component of an ecosystem. It includes soil, water, air, sunlight, and other non-living components. The sun is the ultimate source of energy on earth. It provides the energy required for all plant life. The plants utilize this energy for the process of photosynthesis. During this biological process, light energy is converted into chemical energy and is passed on through successive levels. The flow of energy from a producer to a consumer and eventually to an apex predator or a detritivore is called a food chain. For example, in this illustration, the grasshopper eats the grass. The frog eats the grasshopper. The snake eats the frog. The hawk eats the snake. When the hawk dies, fungi breaks the bodies down and turns into nutrients. The nutrients along with the sun and water cause the grass to grow. In this food chain, grass is the producer or the autotroph that used the energy from the sun together with water and nutrients from the soil to produce their own food in the process of photosynthesis. Grasshopper is the primary consumer or the first order consumer and a herbivore, the one who ate the grass. Frog is the secondary consumer or the second order consumer and a carnivore that ate the primary consumer which is the grasshopper. Snake is the tertiary consumer or the third order consumer and a carnivore that ate the secondary consumer which is the frog. Hawk is the final consumer and a carnivore that ate the tertiary consumer which is the snake. When hawk dies, decomposers breaks the bodies down and turns into nutrients. Then the nutrients from the dead body of the final consumer will be absorbed by the plants for the process of photosynthesis and the plants will be consumed again by the primary consumers. The cycle continues 
like a chain. That is what we so called food chain. Food web is a network of interconnected food chains. It comprises all the food chains within a single ecosystem. It helps in understanding that plants lay the foundation of all the food chains. In a marine environment, plankton forms the primary producer. In the given food web in our illustration, we can have many food chains in it. We have corn, grasshopper, rat, phyton, eagle. Another flowering plant is the producer, primary consumer, butterfly, secondary consumer, frog, tertiary consumer, phyton, and the final consumer will be the eagle. Also, we can have mangoes as our producer, fruit fly as our first order consumer, dragonfly as our second order consumer, thrush as our third order consumer, wolf as our fourth order consumer, then the eagle will be our final consumer, and everything ends with a decomposer. The comparison between food chain and food web. The food chain can be said as the straight and single pathway for the flow of energy in an ecosystem through different species of organisms. Food web, on the other hand, is defined as the complicated pathway of an ecosystem consists of numerous food chains of different trophic level through which the energy flow. The energy pyramid is a model that shows the flow of energy from one trophic level to the next in an ecosystem. The model is a diagram that compares the energy used by organisms at each trophic level. The energy in an energy pyramid is measured in units of kilocalories. Energy pyramids are similar to biomass pyramids, another type of trophic pyramid that models the amount of biomass at each trophic level in an ecosystem. The structure of an energy pyramid reflects the trophic structure of an ecosystem. The pyramid is divided into trophic levels similar to those in a food chain. At the pyramid base are the producers, autotrophic organisms that make their own food from inorganic substances. All of the other organisms in the pyramid are consumers. These are heterotrophs, meaning that they get food energy by consuming other organisms. The consumers at each trophic level feed on organisms from the level below and are themselves consumed by organisms at the level above. Primary consumers are organisms that consume producers. Thus, most primary consumers are herbivores. Secondary consumers are carnivores that feed on primary consumers and tertiary consumers are carnivores that eat secondary consumers. In rare instances, an ecosystem may have an additional trophic level composed of quaternary consumers, carnivores that consume tertiary consumers. The shape of an energy pyramid shows that the amount of food energy that enters each trophic level is less than the amount that entered the level below. Approximately, 90% of the food energy that enters a trophic level is lost, as heat, when it is used by organisms to power the normal activities of life, such as breathing and digesting food. The remaining 10% is stored in a various organisms' tissues. It is the latter energy that is available to be passed to the next trophic level. Thus, the higher the trophic level on the pyramid, the lower the amount of energy available. The number of organisms at each level decreases relative to the level below because there is less energy available to support those organisms. The top level of an energy pyramid has the fewest organisms because it has the least amount of energy. Eventually, there is not enough energy left to support another trophic level, thus the most ecosystems only have four trophic levels.